Hello everyone, welcome to lecture 7.2 where we are going to be looking at some more advanced queries in MongoDB. In this video we're going to take a little bit deeper look at search queries using the find function. We're then going to talk about aggregate queries and then finally wrap up the video by looking at how we can write JavaScript functions to operate inside MongoDB. So up to this point, most of the queries we have written look for equality and basically some simple AND operations. So for example, if we wanted to find the population of Harris County, Texas, we would write a query like this that just says db dot the name of our collection, in this case US counties, find, and then we have some uh, criteria here that we're looking for, a value of Harris County for county and a value of Texas for state, and then we're projecting just these certain attributes we are interested in. So this MongoDB code would be very similar to the SQL code, select county state total pop from US counties where county equals Harris County and state equals Texas. And of course, if we wanted to execute this in MongoDB, we can just connect to our MongoDB server. I'm gonna launch the Mongo client, and I am going to copy and paste this command. And we get in result state Texas, county, Harris County, and our total population is 4,525,519. Now we can make this query just a little bit more complex by looking not for a condition of equality, but uh, where our population is greater than 2 million. And as we mentioned in a previous video, we can't use just our normal uh, greater than and less than sign operators. We have to use this Java style uh, dollar sign GT for greater than or dollar sign LT for less than. So this MongoDB command is very similar to this SQL command. And let's just see where everything lines up. Uh, when we say select in SQL, that's just like saying find in MongoDB. When we say from US counties, that's like when we uh, specify the collection that we're querying in MongoDB. And then our projection in SQL is the second object that we're passing into our find command in MongoDB. And then our selection criteria in SQL is the first object that we're passing into our MongoDB command. So let's go ahead and take a look at this in MongoDB. If we were to just pass this uh, command where we're looking for all of our counties with a total population greater than 2 million, we see we have this list of counties. And if we wanted to see how many counties this is, we can use our single purpose aggregator of count. And this is a little different than the aggregate function we're going to be looking at uh, later in this video. And when we use count, we can't project certain attributes. All we can do is pass in our, uh, our query. And we see that we have 14 counties with a total population greater than 2 million. Now let's say we have multiple Boolean conditions that we want to test for, and we're gonna start by looking at the AND command. And we can actually execute an AND just by passing multiple criteria into our selection object in the find command. Okay, so this is a totally valid way of finding all of our counties that have a population greater than two million and where the uh, number of people that take the public transit to work is greater than 50%. So I'm gonna copy and paste this over into MongoDB. And we see we have only two counties that match this criteria, Kings County, New York, and Queens County, New York. Uh, both populations over two million, both transit over 50%. Now, a second way we could do this would be to use the AND operator. So AND is going to take a, an array of objects and evaluate that all of the criteria passed in that array evaluate to true. Okay, so we have an array of objects here. This one must evaluate to true and this one must evaluate to true. So I'm gonna paste this over into MongoDB and you see we get the exact same result. And the reason I'm showing you these two different approaches to do the same thing is as we will find in just a couple of slides, 
While using this AND operator appears to be a little bit more complex, it actually adheres to the pattern that we're going to be using for these operations uh, a little bit better than this approach, and then also is a little bit more robust when we get into more complex queries. So I would uh, strongly suggest getting very familiar and comfortable with uh, this approach to passing an array of objects you want to evaluate into our AND operator. So while it was possible to just pass multiple uh, expressions into our find object and it would evaluate as an AND, we cannot do that for OR. And this is where I was saying that uh, using the AND operator was going to help us understand the pattern of how we need to be uh, executing these operations a little bit better because if we want to do an OR, we actually have to pass the array of objects we want to evaluate into the OR operator like this. So in this case, we're looking for all counties that have a total population greater than 2 million or that have a number of people that take transit that is greater than 50%. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this over to MongoDB. And now in this case, we see we have a few additional counties pop up. For example, New York County in New York, which has a total population that is uh, less than 2 million. However, it does evaluate true for transit being over 50, right? Same for Bronx County, New York. We have a transit over 50, but total pop is less than 2 million. And then on the other hand, we have plenty of counties that have a total pop over 2 million, but transit is less than 50. So this is our OR evaluation taking place. Now, another really useful operator we can use is not equal or dollar sign NE. So in this case, as we saw a lot of our large counties were in California, let's imagine that we're just not interested in California at all and we want to filter some of that out. Uh, we could say something like this, where total population is greater than 2 million and state not equal California. So let's go ahead and paste that into MongoDB. And we see now we get a slightly truncated list. We see our counties that are in Arizona, Florida, Texas, New York, and Washington. Um, however, we have now removed all of our California counties. So this is a good example of what I was talking about earlier, how the AND operator is going to give us more predictable results than just passing uh, several expressions into our find object. At first glance, it appears that this should work. Uh, if we said db.uscounties.find, where total pop is greater than 2 million, and state not equal California, and state not equal New York, well, it seems like this should filter out both California and New York. So let's see if that is the case. I'm going to copy and paste this query. And yeah, it seems like it excluded... New York, the one that we specified second, but California still shows up. So this was not the behavior we expected. So if we, on the other hand, ran this query using our AND operator, so we want to find total population greater than 2 million and state is not equal to California, state is not equal to New York, using the AND operator there, we see that this works as expected. Now, another approach we could take to getting this same uh, answer is to pass a set of states that we're interested in into the NIN or not in operator. Okay, so here we're passing in uh, this array, and notice it's an array because it's wrapped in these square braces, an array of values that we do not want the value of state to be in this array of values. Okay, so we could pass any number of values for state into this array. And this is very similar to a SQL query where you might say state not in, and then in parentheses, a common delimited list of values. So there are quite a few other operators that we can use for the find function in MongoDB. Uh, this is just a, a short list of uh, examples here, but I would encourage you to take a, a look at what's out there and play around and experiment a little bit and see what works best for you.
The next topic for this video is talking about aggregation pipelines and running aggregate queries. So our aggregate function creates a pipeline of stages that allows us to run aggregate queries in a very similar way to how we write aggregate queries in SQL using the group by operation. So we're going to pass up to three objects into our aggregate function. The uh, dollar sign group object, which is similar to group by in SQL. The dollar sign match object, which is similar to where in SQL. And then dollar sign sort, which is similar to order by. Now, just like in SQL, we can only project attributes that are either the attributes we're grouping by or the output of the aggregate function. Um, however, MongoDB just mostly kind of handles this for us. So let's say we wanted to find the total population of each state, which of course we're going to uh, calculate by getting the sum of the population of all of the counties in that state. So we would do this by saying db.uscounties.aggregate, and then in the object we're passing into aggregate, we're going to group by state, and we're going to create a new attribute called state pop which is the sum of the total pop attribute. So let's go ahead and paste this into MongoDB. So db.uscounties.aggregate, grouping by state, and then creating an attribute state pop, which is the sum of total pop. And here we see we have the population for each one of our states. And MongoDB wants us to type IT to iterate through all of the uh, responses, and there's all 50 states. Now, if we wanted to have these uh, populations return in a specific order, we can just pass in this sort object, and we're going to sort by state pop in descending order. That's what the negative one is going to give us. And so now when we run this, we see California has the uh, highest population, followed by Texas, Florida, and New York. Or if we wanted this to be in descending order, we would just make state pop one. And now we see our smallest state is Wyoming, followed by uh, Vermont, Washington, D.C., Alaska, and so on. The final object we can pass into the aggregate operation is match. And this is similar to our where uh, statement in SQL. So if we wanted to get the same thing, find the population of each state, but we're only interested in states that begin with the letter M, we can pass in this uh, regular expression statement here that just says state's going to begin with M. And when we do this, we see we only return states where the uh, name of the state begins with the letter M. And of course, there are a lot of different Boolean uh, expressions you could pass into your match operator here. This is just kind of a very simple example to show you what's going on. Now, as we mentioned earlier, there is this very handy single purpose aggregator of count, uh, which we can pass a query into and it will tell you how many documents evaluate to true for that expression. Uh, however, there is no uh, count aggregate function, um, which is a little different than what you might be used to in SQL. Uh, however, we can replicate the uh, behavior of count by just doing a sum of the number one. So we're just going to add one for every document that is in this group. So if we wanted to find, for example, the number of counties in each state, we can group by state, and then we're going to create an attribute called num counties, which is just the sum of one plus one plus one plus one plus one for every document that is in each group that has a common value for state. So if we did something like this, we'll see that as we have seen in our previous queries in Postgres and HBase, that Texas has the largest number of counties with 254, followed by Georgia, Virginia, Kentucky, and so on down the line. We could also answer some other interesting questions. Like, for example, we saw that there are two Harris counties in the United States, a Harris County, Texas, and a Harris County, Georgia. So that got me thinking, what county name is the most reused? What's the most popular county name in the United States? So we could uh, group by the name of the county and then say times used is going to be the sum of one for each document that has a common value of that county name. 
So when we do this, we see that we have 30 instances of Washington County. So 30 out of our 50 states have Washington County, 25 Jefferson counties, 24 Franklin counties, 23 Lincoln counties. We have a lot of president names here. And let's say we weren't interested in seeing all of these. Maybe we only want to see counties that appear more than 20 times. So we could pass in a match object where the value of times used, which is our, uh, our aggregate query here, is greater than 20. And now this is only going to show us the names of counties that appear over 20 times. Now it is quite nice that MongoDB has this functionality just built right into it. Uh, as we saw when we looked at HBase, if we wanted to do anything even remotely similar to this, it required using Hive and uh, creating MapReduce jobs and, and a lot of added overhead and complexity. However, uh, do keep in mind that like HBase, since there is no schema to MongoDB, MongoDB really doesn't know what documents have uh, what fields, and it can be pretty inefficient compared to running a similar query in a relational database. Now, the queries we've been running so far, uh, we have a pretty small data set here, so we don't see this big performance hit, but in larger data sets or with more complex queries, uh, this can be significantly less efficient than a relational database. So just be careful and make sure you're using the right tool for the job when you do this. For our final topic of this video, we're going to take a quick look at functions. And as we discussed in a previous video, all of the commands that we execute in MongoDB are really just JavaScript functions. So we can extend what MongoDB is natively capable of by just writing additional JavaScript functions to do whatever we need. So this is kind of similar to the idea of stored procedures that we've written previously in Postgres. So if we wanted to, for example, write a function that would allow us to insert students into our student collection a little bit more effectively, uh, we could write this function called insert student. It's going to take three arguments and we can name these whatever we want. And uh, in the example in the book, they're actually named with the same name as the attribute that's going into the document. I thought that was a little bit confusing. So I just abbreviated these to N, C, and H for name, classification, and hours. And every time we pass values in for these arguments, MongoDB is just going to execute this command, db.students.insert name, and then the value that we passed in for the N argument classification and the value we passed in for C and hours and the and the value of the argument we passed in for H. So let's uh, go ahead and create this function in MongoDB. So let's first just take a look at what is in our students collection at this point. So I'm going to say db.students.find. Okay, you see we have Adam, Christy, Angela, Charlie, Edgar, Gina, uh, Isabel, Kendra, Michael, and Norman. And so I'm going to copy and paste my insert students or insert student function. And now if I want to insert a new student, I can just type insert student and we'll pass a name. We'll say Tom is a freshman and that he's completed nine hours. So when we do this, we don't get anything in response, but if we now say db.students.find, we see we have Tom in our collection. So just like in Postgres, we can write these functions to streamline some of our operations. And due to the tight integration between MongoDB and JavaScript, we can actually go a lot further with this if we're so inclined. So to close this video, I just want to point out that there are many search operations which we were not able to touch on. So some of these are explained more in the book or if you just Google uh, search operators in MongoDB, there is a tremendous amount of uh, information out there for you. And just experiment with these things and play around with it. And, uh, and it's really a, a lot of fun and a lot that you can learn there. Um, also, as I just mentioned, MongoDB very heavily integrated with JavaScript. So there are opportunities to make uh, search queries and write functions that are uh, quite complex and, and quite powerful. Uh, so 
So a lot of opportunities for learning there. Uh, however, doing these types of powerful queries is not without some cost due to the schemaless nature of MongoDB. So pros and cons to everything we're doing, but I hope this has shed a little bit of light into some of the very powerful things we can do with Mongo, and I look forward to seeing how you apply this knowledge.